Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth. If you just joined us, this is Enterprise Morning on Enterprise TV. You're welcome back. Over 1,000 Nigerians are stranded in the United Kingdom after receiving fake employment letters. The UN Migration Agency in Nigeria disclosed National Organization for Migration, IOM's Chief of Mission in Nigeria, Laurent Dubok, disclosed these in Abuja on Monday where he advised potential migrants to be cautious of a syndicate that specializes in offering fake employment letters to Nigerians seeking to work in the UK. He said the victims of the syndicate, which was not named on presenting the employment letters to the organizations in the UK, are told the letters did not come from them. Many of these people, they lack the means to come back, while others are ashamed. The agency also announced that it is working with partners to repatriate thousands of persons, including Nigerians from Tunisia, which recently placed a ban on migration. It's also working extensively with Italy to develop regular migration pathways for qualified Nigerians. The book encouraged Nigerians to seek out proper information before migrating, adding that at least 260,000 Nigerians had approached it in 2023, seeking guidance on how to migrate through regular or approved routes. My guest this morning are Dr. Victor Ohai and um, Mr. Innocent Adulogba, a journalist and a public affairs analyst. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Enterprise Morning today. Thank you. Thank you so very much for making up time to be part of our show today. So let's jump into the crux of the matter. Now, every Nigerian is very familiar with the catch word, Jabba. It's very uh, common in Nigeria. Now, going by um, what I read out, why is it difficult for both authorities in Nigeria and the UK? Why is it difficult for them not to have approached this issue of arresting syndicates who are bent on the um, fraud in people. You asking me? Yes, sir. Let me start from you, Mr. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so, um, you know what lawyers will say? Caveat emptor. Okay. Which means buyer, beware. Mm. The issue of, um, before we talk about even um, Japan and all that, I expect that if you are even getting a job, whether for an employment agency or you should do your due diligence. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's even the business of government. You have decided to apply for a job. You have on your own accepted whatever you were offered. You went to get your visa and then you went out there only to find out that you were scammed. Mm. It's unfortunate. I personally have, uh, this may sound cruel, but I, I have little sympathy for Japanians. Why, sir? <laughs> because... Uh, who are they leaving the country for? They want to go out there and leave the rest of us. It's not out of bad belly or anything, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that, it's or West, whether we like it or less, mm -hmm. go to main defense. Why do I say so? They go to these countries, you get all the training here and all that, you go to these countries. Before they even reach, the, before they even leave, they start bad mouthing Nigeria. Oh, this is your God forsaken country, blah, 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 blah. Now they expect my sympathy? No. But, sir, if I'm a. I'm coming back to okay. the right. question. Yes. Um, yes, the situation will be sympathetic because some of them may have sold off everything they have. You know, and an entire family may have gone there. But if it doesn't work, simply come back. Those people want to come back out of shame. What are those? What's the shame? You go in there, I expect that if you have great skills, um, you should, even if you can't get what you wanted, you can start with something else. You know, I mean, 
Let me speak about the kind of person that I am. Okay. I have a doctorate, yes. I could get any job because the truth is that there are not too many people who have it. And so there are many schools to start with mm. who want uh, people with my kind of uh, skills. And what if I don't have it? There's always a starting point. If you go there and start security work, anybody can come and say, ah, to hell, this and that. From where you are, mm. it's like a bridge between the promised land and where you think is a God forsaken land. That period in between, mm -hmm. the security work you're doing is first of all to keep body and soul together. Mm. After you've kept body and soul together, you have a place to stand. Now you can confidently begin to pick and select jobs because you can feed yourself. You cannot pick and then start looking for jobs or try to regularize your, your stay. But if you go there out of pride, mm -hmm. go forward, you not go forward, go backward, you not go backward. And you are there expecting me to sympathize with you. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but sir, I, I think it's it's I think it has come to that moment where we need to calm down and be realistic about issues here in Nigeria. So you would agree with me that the leading cause of migration, number one, environmental, number two, political, number three, social, and the fourth one is economic. Now, let us talk about Nigeria. Nigeria, there are lots of issues here. Economic Sorry, could be the reason why. Me, political could be the let reason why. Let me interrupt you, let me interrupt you. You are the one asking questions. Yes. But I want clarity. Okay. Can you break down some of these big, big words you just gave, like environment and the rest? Why you think there are reason, reasons for Japan? You gave four. Yes. Break them down. Okay. And then I'll attempt to answer. All right. So let's take a look at economic, right? As it stands so today. Start with the others. Okay, no. no. You make it look like, before I come to economic, yes. you added the others to make it look like. <laughs> So let economics be the last. Talk about the others. No, of course I added all of them, but of course we have you we have to, we have, you have issues. To take them out. You admit that they yes. are not issues. If you don't, then I will I will I will insist that you do. Before you mention economic, explain the others or say those ones are not important. Because you see, it's easy to come on air mm. and then just use big grammar and say this is the reason why people are going at economic, environmental, social, blah blah blah, and they make it look like such a big deal. If you don't, I, if those ones are not an issue, admit it now. And let's move on to economics. Are those an issue or not? If not, you have to oh, explain um, them. No, you will come to that, yes. please. You will have your time, mm. please. Not vex. But yes. I need to deal with this. Mm. After that, I'll be quiet for the rest of the okay. So, do you agree that those ones are not an issue? Yeah, there are parts of them that don't apply for now to, the to Nigeria. So, I, I would love, economic, yes, I yes. Right so, I, I think I would love to, you know, um, concentrate on those areas that I think that Which connects one? towards economic number one. No, no. We'll talk about the other for economics because that's the, that's the lowest hanging fruit, the one you can easily blame yes. anything on. Yes. So, I, I, I would love to pen out political. I, what is political? Of course, it's sympathetical. When you talk about the political, um, you know, uh, um, strata that we find ourselves. The people and, are any of them being persecuted. But political leadership could be the reason. I would love us to look at the crux of the matter here, sir. Let's, let's take a look at the crux of the matter. What the implications for the economy? So you're still going back to economy. So now let's talk about economy. Yes. Let's break it down. All right, let's so break it down, sir. What is the economic situation? Sir, so what is the... The GDP, the current GDP of an average Nigerian today, from May 29th. Let's let just start from uh, from from there. Do you think the middle class in Nigeria is still in existence today, sir? Yes. The people who are in Gambia and remain in Gambia, the people in Benin who remain in Benin, Togo who are still remaining in Togo, are they animals? Are they not human beings? Are their GDP better than ours? I raise my hand. All right. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Innocent, I think I would love us to have like um, a continuation from what we earlier um, talked about. And I would love to be as realistic as possible. In Lagos, in the, in the last couple of days, we've not had electricity. The last couple of days, they said it been planned, uh, shut down, and so on and so forth. Nobody is coming to give us explanation. Now, how do you think a micro scale entrepreneur? How do you think, or why do you think a micro scale entrepreneur 
would see reasons to want to maintain or stay in a climb like Nigeria and not consider Jabba as an alternative. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Henry, for having me here. I want to thank the doctor. His uh, responses have given me some good guidance. Okay. Uh, maybe I should say this before answering you. The GDP may not be peculiar to individuals, perhaps per capita income. Yes. And maybe the GDP will be a collective mm. for the national output mm. within a 12 month period or whichever they do it. Um, yesterday, I went to a place to buy uh, chicken. And the woman asked me if I would like to buy. Mm. I said, are you here to sell at Ogba Market? And she told me she is beginning to be pessimistic that her stock will go down mm. because of this electricity. Exactly. And then filling stations at that time mm. were not selling. Yes, we are selling fuel. So people are in dire straits. Mm. I know you look at Dr. Okai and you think he is comfortable, mm. but you don't know the story. So sometimes when people are resilient, about staying in Nigeria, there is the quick misconception that they are comfortable, that's why. But, they say they sorry, I promise I was always the same, but let me just say something. Okay, sir. You just came back from Botswana. Okay, granted, that's, I mean, it's a country that is a big business for nine, in comfort and all that. But there are other countries as well, Rwanda and the rest of them. Mm. Do you know how much they pay per rent, for rent in a month? A month, some of these countries, they pay as much as 700, 1,000, 1,200 dollars per month for okay. the Okay. Good. Like in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. they guarantee the electricity. Yes, thank you. What are the infrastructure no, indices yeah, that yeah. guarantee yeah. all of that? Yeah. Yes. Are the industries working? Okay. Have you heard recently about what's happening in South Africa with their ESCOM? And yeah. Yes. Are you aware? Yes. Are, are they living the country? Okay, so let me quickly continue okay, yes. so that mm -hmm. we, we have a direction. So I'm saying the woman told me, and when she opened her... Fraser, mm. the the stock hadn't gone bad. Okay. But you know how a freshly frozen chicken can smell? Mm. It was not the same. I bought, all right. Mm. I bought. Because it hadn't gone bad. Take it from me. <laughs> it's on the brink of going bad. So, mm. sir, a drowning man, that's how I will answer. Mm. Whatever they hold is a lifeline. And in this situation, rationality is, is far away. What Sorry, I'm coming, sir. Okay. So some people doing this jackpot are no more thinking. I don't know if I'm wrong or right. Mm. The only is someone went mm. and it worked. Me too will try. Of course, we have uh, pictures across, let me mention, mm. CNN, Al Jazeera. When we see people drowning mm. in droves on the Mediterranean, mm. in one of the interviews, they were interview a, 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 a South Sudanese at Tangiers mm. before the crossing. He said this boat he is looking can take him to his death. Or if he survives, he will leave, but he will climb it. Because where he is coming from, there's no need going back. Mm. So in Nigeria, the situation is slippery. It's difficult to hold this or name this. But on the surface, the dwindling is daily. You look at dollar to naira, the impotence is on the naira, and it's daily descending. You look at today, you hear pharmaceutical companies have shut down, they've emigrated to another one. Oh, the number of doctors. So the news, the social reality is not consoling, it's not comforting. And that's where this immigrants become desperate. That's how I say I won't quote one uh, theory. One, I'm just telling you the social reality. If you go to the passport office now, it's besieged with crowd. If you go to the airport now, the, 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 the flight are at bulging points. And the reality is naked. <coughs> so I would think, I would think, because I would love to jack myself. I would also love to convince those who are doing the jack not to do that's where I stand. Okay. But I don't sorry, sir. But I don't have what it is to convince somebody not to jack up. In the face of all what happened. Because and the because elements I, I are be, actually there. I like to say it again. I believe Nigerians love their country. Too well. All they want is the government to give them reason to continue exactly. loving the country. And and again, another reason I think 
helps or motivates people to jack is there is a dialectic in the life of the masses and the life of the political class. While the masses, I just gave you a market romance scenario, are under scorching economic recession. The government, all the government are looking comfortable. You somebody you know, sir. Who maybe is any one million naira a month, eight hundred thousand, becomes an elected political person. You can't recommend them to any of you. Their fortune changes, and we have it now. Four years, their pension level. While there are hungry retired policemen, teachers, people who have served thirty-five years and are dying on pension queues. So you you are in the country, sir, and for the level of your uh, learnedness. You hear how much they used to renovate buildings. You hear how much carry the contingent abroad. You hear how much uh, yachts are going for. And you hear how much is allocated statutorily to education. So these imbalances have, as, like I said, have made some people think like a drowning person. They, they put rationality behind. If this is what the government of the, my country are doing, let me sort myself out somewhere. And for me, that's where they land in this kind of mm. hands of scammers. Mm. That's, that's, okay, that's, that's how I see. Before I'm made to look like uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a very interesting question. I want to say this. Yes. First, mm. I'm an incredible optimist. Okay. In terms of my country, Nigeria. Mm. I'm quite infectious. Mm. And it doesn't matter who's in government. Okay. I, I believe in Nigeria. Mm. Now, what does it take to Japan? Particularly for this particular class that we have spoken mm. about. You see a whole family group. For many of them, it will not cost them less than 50 to 25 million. Mm, true. To relocate. Yeah. They will sell land, sell property, everything to leave Nigeria. If you have the wisdom to be able to raise that kind of money, how much do you really need to start a small business that can make you comfortable in but is the infrastructure there to well, sustain the business? Sorry, I, I refuse to accept what you're saying. Okay. In this same country, yes. whether you like it or yes, mm. the key you're holding in your hand will grow up to be a billionaire without going abroad. In this same country. I have always said this. If a government is bad, some people will prosper. If a government is good, there are people who will still not prosper. I have made up my mind. Mm. Even if the devil is there, I will prosper. It's a mindset. Mm. You know, so whether you have the best of government, mm. there are people who will still not prosper. They will still condemn and say rubbish. Or they will say all sorts of things. And no matter how bad the government is, there are those who are focused, mm. and they will make it. You know, so I think we need to begin to see the good in our country. For instance, I give an example. What I for recently we're looking at this African continental free trade area agreement. Nigeria has a population of 200, about 200, over 200 million, let's say, or about 280 million. What are the implications of those numbers? It means without custom barriers, immigration barriers, you have a huge market of 200 and something million. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure or no infrastructure? It means if you produce a good in order, you have that potential market no custom on the road. No immigration will stop you for visa. That is, if security allows you please, to cultivate please, your farm. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. Because you are pumping negativity. And the, the, the no, I am. The does not need that right now. Allow me. Okay. Allow me. Now, it's important that people see. Mm. Negativity is easy to pump around. That's what everybody has accepted. But for us, let's throw a little light okay. in this darkness and see the potentials. Okay. So with this 220 million or thereabouts, you, Nigeria is one of those few countries where you can just bring out, come out early in the morning, put a table and a tray and a chair, carry pure water put there, and you will start selling immediately. Bring granite or whatever, you just put the seat in front of your house, and when, no matter how bad it is, one or two or three people will stop by and buy something. If you're not easy, if you choose to do that, if you're not waiting for mana to fall from heaven. It is something we have which most of these countries don't have. Let me go back to Botswana. A population of 200 and, I mean, 
2.5 million, the entire country. The capital, Rabarone, has 200, is 200,000 people. I was shocked. It was like a joke. And yet, it's one of the richest countries on the continent today. They don't have oil. Most of it is desert. Okay. Even their tourism is not that well developed. It can be argued that they have good government. Okay. Which is probably what Which is very argue. important. No, but listen. Mm. No matter what is, the government is there on its own. Mm. So, but you as an individual, have you looked at the potentials that are out there? Why is it that when here we, we, see, we, see, we don't see anything good in us? Hmm. But when we go out, the same people who look at it have no potential, they go out and then they do very well. Hmm. You might say that the environment that makes it system, uh, the system that makes it conducive. But no matter how much money you make, there you say taxes. Hmm. You may think you are making so much money because of the exchange rates, but how much of it do you get to keep at the end of the month? How much really filters down? You see, people are all the so-called dollars there, and you are expecting them to send money, and they are complaining every day. They are not just complaining; they are not being selfish. It's a reality. It was in this country that that would made this money. It is here that uh, uh, Rabi, uh, what is his name, uh, made this money. <coughs> it is in this same economy that uh, what do you call it, Hotel um, Dollar, made this money. It is in this same economy that Adenuga made this money. They did not make their money by living abroad. Adenuga made his money from this, from living in Nigeria. This is where they traded and made their money. The potentials are here if we care to see. You cannot get what you don't see. That's the point I'm making. Okay. It's easy to, to go, okay, let's all travel, let's all go. Let's, there's, there's nothing good in this country, there's nothing. You just made a stupid generalization now that, oh, there was, of course there was failure in the system. In okay. The, yeah. For how many days? But it's still persistent, no, no, it's still there. Whether you say, whether you say or no, we're not saying it that and I'm not hearing generator. And I'm in your studios. I'm not hearing generator. So what do you do with the time that you have? But you also have generators. The thing is to make the most of what you have. For as long as you keep complaining and saying that there is nothing good. If you say it is good, it will be good for you. If you say it is bad, that's all you will see. It's not the curse. Let us begin to see, for once, the potential that we have in this country. The politicians are bad. They are where they are. But we have businessmen, that's another class of human beings. Politicians are a different class. You understand? Mm. So, if you don't, let the politicians do what they do. Mm. But why don't we join the businessmen or honest people who will see how we can make our money and then we are in a different class. And let's carry on our own while they carry on what they do. Mm. Mr. Innocent, you know, um, that's a very big reason why I think we cannot separate leadership, good leadership, with the behavior of people who are under such leadership. Just a couple of uh, weeks back, uh, Bola Ametinibu was abroad and he was the campaigning, president. yes, he was campaigning and asking Nigerian doctors who have migrated to other parts of the world to come back home. But sadly, you would know or you know that the same president would often patronize foreign hospitals. Now, do you think it makes any sense for Nigerian doctors who are asked to come back home, do you think it's, it's, it's okay for them to come back home knowing that the president makes good use of medical facilities abroad where they find themselves? <clears throat> well, um, there is what we do as charity begins at home. Oh. I, I, from where I sit, I would like to tap into what Dr. Hai said. So if we believe in Nigeria, we should have laws that protect Nigerianism. All of us in this studio, including those behind the camera, from our home base to what we have, our own department, we used to have functional tester companies, farms that farm cotton. Where are they? So if we are talking population and market and actor and all of them, what are we going to be selling? We were here about two weeks ago. There was a newspaper headline 
that the that before farmers could harvest, mm. they have don't to know pay. what they to call them, whether bandits mm. or yeah, bandits. It was a newspaper heading mm. that they should pay them before they can go to their farm. Access their farms. Their and I thought this was, in quotes, a tip-off to the security men to mm. ambush at the point of these exchanges. I don't think mm -hmm. beyond that sensational headline we've heard anything. So the, 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 the story of being a good Nigerian ambassador is on one hand, I would say. Nigerians are waiting for the government to convince them with tangible pragmatics. I want doctors never to jackpot. Mm -hmm. I would like there to be a law on all medical students not to jackpot. I'm coming, sir. But I would like there to be another law that says once you are a government mm, official, political leaders, local government, House of Assembly, uh, commissioner, minister, governor, president, you are not eligible to travel out for medical work or anything. Because obviously there has so to be a balance. These people who cannot travel out, we have work to do. That's what I think. Mm. In that case, the money you channel to SUVs, to re 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 renovation of building, can be channeled structurally to building health institutions that function well. So, if doctors can travel or come back home, you will be there for them to treat. The essence of foreign treatment is to life longevity. But my age, 40 something, they die. So as I'm talking today, I'm eligible for death. I'm still lucky by the grace of God to be alive. There are people who have traveled out, done all the expensive treatment, and still died there. There are people who have stayed here, have done nothing, and are still living. And I dare say the government is an agent of, that is killing the Naira if they constantly go abroad for treatment. Because if this Naira was here, the value would be stronger. Uh, I said before, I wish I could convince people who are doing this japa not to japa. They don't have what to convince them with. So that talk from the president mm. should come back to how I began. Charity begins, begins at home. To, yes. From him, it should trickle down. And then, governance is not by force. So if you are campaigning for Senate, for a minister, for any to appointed or political, and you know that the law says if you accept this office, you are not eligible for foreign medical treatment, don't, don't take criticize it. Take it as it is, or leave it as it is. There will be people who will feel it like that. And then maybe from somewhere, the government will balance this health thing. The medical export through for medical practitioners would also be balanced, and then it would be 50-50. The reason people are grumbling and maybe jackpying or whatever, I think is the imbalance. Imbalance, exactly. That's what I think. Exactly. Um, a doctor, you, you, you are an experienced a traveler, and um, um, maybe just like our leaders, you have had the opportunity of seeing systems and organizations and communities where things work where things work. You would agree with me, sir, that lots of our leaders, 95% of them, I stand to be corrected, have had the opportunity of taking advantage of these communities and societies where things work. In fact, lots of their families are domiciled in some of these places, only for them to be present here to lead us. Why do you think it's difficult for our leaders to replicate what they have enjoyed or what they keep enjoying in other societies in Nigeria so as this Japa thing can be nipped in the bud. Migration is a way of life. You don't come from this city. I am an indigenous of Lagos State. I'm a Nigerian. Are you an indigenous of Lagos? My question is straight. You don't have to be Okay. Are you an indigenous of Lagos? No, I am not. Were you born here? No. Did you go to school here? No. So, but you're here now. Yes. Migration is a fact of life, whether internal or external. And so, I personally would say I have nothing against migration. Let's get back to the main topic. Okay. We're looking at people who are victims, who sold off everything here, and were conned, you know, mm. by, you know, 
you see by so-called employment agencies, by thousands of them or so, and they're now stranded in the UK. If you ask me, first, for them to have been able to afford it, they were comfortable here. They are regular jobs. They didn't more comfortable than you and I. Mm -hmm. It's their right to seek a better life. I've no quarrel with it. Okay? Now, did they do their due diligence? Maybe it wasn't due enough. But the diligence was not <laughs> clear enough. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Excuse my English. So, uh, but they found themselves in this situation where they are now, stranded. What do you do in a situation like that? Simply eat your humble pie, you made a mistake, dust yourself and come back home. At least one person should be able to come back home, become a member of the entire family. The breadwinner can come back home and come back and... And start afresh. Start afresh. Okay. Yes. Start afresh. It's pride that kills most of us. It's pride. Stupid pride. You have made a mistake. Own up to it. Be man enough or woman enough as the case may be. Mm. Come back and then... If they can manage to find something to do, they'll get it. But if not, settle and then start, you know, returning, going, uh, returning them back. I saw videos of people living in, in car parks, in comfort. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, video. I did. You know? So, who, I mean, it's, who is doing They're doing that to themselves. It's terrible. Why would you want to do that? Be like that when you're more comfortable here? You can't go hungry in Nigeria. Your neighbors are, no matter how bad. Family here, we look after ourselves. You are, we're not as cold as they are over there, apart from the weather that is that adds to the coldness. <laughs> you understand? So I expect them to come back or be humble enough to say, okay, I've made a mistake. Let me start from the bottom up. This is what I expect for yeah. us to do. And is there a role for government in all of this? Mm. Unfortunately, we don't have embassies that are responsible. You go, the first thing you do is just, before you call it, they start, they criminalize you before you even come to the gate. You know, so to go there and complain and say, okay, I have a problem, can the embassy help me and all that, is the same problem we have with our government. The same government is the same way government is there, the same way government is over there. But they are our government over there, the ambassadors are our president over there. Mm. But you cannot cry to anybody, they wouldn't really listen to you. They will treat foreigners better than you. When you come, they already think you're a criminal before you even come. Okay? So if you find yourself in a situation like that, as they have found themselves, if, it, if the embassy cannot help you, just humbly look for what you can do as an undocumented migrant. If you are documented, I don't know how they got it, but you may have got some sort of papers. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So if you get it, then you don't need to look for a big job. It's not your country. Start with what you have. And then the 1,000, if you do that, the 1,000 will reduce. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And if for those who will look for something to do. Then for those who will say, okay, let me go back and start afresh, it will, the number will reduce even more and save us all this embarrassment. It's not a pity party. We're expected to feel sorry for them for having made that mistake. But I can assure you, people like me could have advised some of them and they would have said, get away, job. You understand? Mm. And now they expect me to sympathize with them. When if you told them, that, look, you have a good job here. You work in a bank. Many of them are bankers. I don't have statistics, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Many of them are comfortable here. Better than the average human being. But the Juko Koro, they keep complaining, God, God, God. you are not thanking God for what you have. You understand what I'm saying? You have a job. No unemployed person, Japas. Where would you get the money from? How will you raise the money? You would have, if people can raise enough, you know what tickets cost now? I mean, if you don't spend any money to jackpot at all, say as an individual, you're not getting a job or anything. Uh -uh. As an individual, you can't go with less than 2.5 million, 3 million. Your ticket alone is already 100, I mean, over a million, well over a million. You understand? Mm -hmm. Not about processing, the cost of processing the visa, you need to have some cash, cash at hand hand. as you're going and all that. So, no poor man jackpots, except those who go through the, even those who go through, who go through the route. Who go through the, the, they yeah. raise money for people to take them. Yeah. None of them is less than a thousand to that. Many of them for five thousand. Money that you can use to start business here. But our attitude of our country bad, country bad. If you say country bad, amen. That means it will be bad for you. If you say it's good, you will see the good in it. There are people today you will give a hundred thousand, say take start business. So what can I do with the hundred thousand? But do you know 
There are people you will give 5,000, 10,000. They will thank you. They will go and buy vegetables in my 12. Start a business. They see the good in what you have given them. Have you not found yourself giving money to somebody who is complaining that he doesn't have a job? He doesn't want you give to do business. And then he says, Is this all you can give to me? They, they, throw it, they almost throw it at you. Have you not seen cases like that? And go and look at their lives. Nothing good can come out of it because they don't see the value in it. But if you, if you appreciate it, if you see the good in everything around you, you will benefit from the good around you. Can we for one be positive? Is my point. Mm -hmm. Last words, Mr. Innocent. Oh, well, I, I, I was uh, maybe a primary school boy when my father woke me up one night and asked me to come and watch the news. I was angry because I was like a last boy. I didn't know why he didn't wake the other the one. one. But I was grateful because I saw with my eyes 1990 granite pyramids. So you have been pyramids in Benue. The caster, I don't know the name now, said, no, Shola Omoni, I think, yeah. said the granite will be distributed across Nigeria and others will be railed to Lagos for export. And at, at, at the time, Nigeria was the largest producer of granite in the world, but second in export to Senegal. So you have been sold. I want to see that Nigeria again. Okay. Because at that time, I don't think people were discussing Jaffa. Yeah, you know, so these clothes we wear, they used to be product of textile industries, yeah. Kakuri, Kaduna, mm -hmm. here in Lagos. The textile industries are now home to rodents, snakes, and True. you know. So I'm praying, like I said before, there are newspaper headlines where a farmer will be treated before harvesting. Mm. So there are many things. You know, they say don't treat symptoms, or what, what was they say? You know, there are many things that have necessitated this jackpot leading to disgrace, like he said. Nigeria, renowned worldwide for its rich, God-given wealth and mineral deposits, have its population, citizens, lurking at open car parks in winter, covering themselves with water. So sure. You know, so let's, let's get a country where Things are fixed how they should be. I believe, irrespective of the need to look inward at good, if things <coughs> are working well, this ratio will be low. Maybe True. It will be low. It will be low. Oh. It, I, I started my comment with, I went to the market. That woman is an entrepreneur. Oh. She believes it will work for her in huh. Nigeria. True. Electricity was not there. Filling stations are not selling fuel. Stock, we don't know if she has already paid for pay. Pay. Go not going down. So, these facts are staring us the in the face. face. I pray, I believe, that in the face of this government's self-aggrandizement, they should just make things work. You can see what they are looking to education and what they are looking to themselves. So, I just pray things work. We can't just be labeled with disgrace. Mm. You go to Canada, they are the border for, uh, what was it called? Uh, 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 there's this, when you come to somewhere as a, 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 a asylum, asylum, thank Sinkers, you, please. Yeah. They are there claiming asylum. We, we are claiming, we, we, in this wealthy country, mm. in this wealthy country. So please, I will use this opportunity I have to be in a media platform to see may the government, state, local government, federally help things to at least yeah, that work time. a little. So we have some sanity. It, it doesn't make sense to gather all your resources, even borrow to just yeah. run, run somewhere. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't make sense. Very true. Please. Very true. Wow, that was really an awesome discussion we had today. And uh, we want to pray for that Nigeria where everyone would have reasons to be proud of the great country that we have. Of course, I would like to say my big thank you to Dr. Victor High for being part of our program today. Thank you so very much, sir. And Mr. Innocent Dulugba, thank you so very much, sir, for being part of our show today. And to our viewers in Nigeria and across the world, we would love to say thank you so very much. You're the reason why we do what we do. But please do remember to like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Enterprise TV 7. Press the notification bell so you get notified whenever we drop our content. I am Henry Igwebike. I'll see you tomorrow.
Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.